we were up here in 2006 with the Taylors brought me up here in 2006 to see that wiki up. I had a really good crew with a very tr well trained eyes and we decided we knew in 2006 that burned areas were very good that there frequently artifacts were exposed on the surface so down at the southern end of the site down low um, we had just stopped for lunch and i'd found a piece of soapstone just a cobble and then i found a matate and we started slowing down and then joyce evans found a projectile point we started looking around and realized that there was a site here monos matates projectile points bifaces and soapstone and then joyce asked so rich does this look like the boulder ridge site and i said well yeah it's in a burn and she said no that circular ring you're standing in does that remind you of of <coughs> boulder ridge and i said oh yeah that yeah that does that reminds me a lot so really joyce evans is the one who discovered the site because she pointed out the obvious that these were stones these stone rings were lodge pads and we found one, then we found another, then we found a couple more. By the end of the day, we'd found, um, I think, 18. And by the end of the second day, we'd found 36. And then we found another 30 when we came back the next year. If you look at this terrain, it's on a 23 degree slope. That's the same slope as an intermediate ski area at a, at a resort. Um, it's rocky. It's just, you wouldn't, no one in their right mind would camp here, right? You know, it's just not conducive to, to the way white people camp now. But in the past, I suspect there was at least 30 centimeters of pine duff covering everything before this burned. And it was a much nicer spot. The draw here is that it's a perfect combination of resources. Um, we're in the middle of a white bark pine forest that covers about 100 he hectares. So that's about 240 acres. Um, and we're right on the edge of the sheep migration corridor. There are sheep here and there are white bark pines here. And white bark pines have the second largest pine nut of all the North American pines. I calculated that there were enough pine nuts on a good year to feed a whole village of 100 people, feed them half the calories for an entire winter if you harvested this whole area, if you harvested all the trees here. You could easily do that. In this area, we have found squirrel caches with several thousand white, unopened white bark pine cones in them. One of those squirrel caches has got the caloric equivalent of an antelope. And yet you didn't have to go chase it down. You didn't have to go kill it with the, the old sharp rock on the end of a stick. All you had to do was sit there and crack open the cones. Uh, so this is really, really a good predictable resource. You can predict when a good pine nut year is going to occur two years in advance. And you would know th that that year is when you come up to high rise. And I think you would invite the friends, the in-laws, the outlaws, everybody and come up here and there would be a, a, a gay old time up here because there's water, there are enough pine nuts for everybody, and there's probably an unsuspecting sheep or elk or deer that would go by. The cool thing about white bark pine cones is that they stay on the trees and they don't open, unlike a pinion, which opens and all the seeds drop and you have to be there or you get outcompeted by squirrels and jays. Here, the, the, pine cone, the pine nuts stay inside the cones until the cones are broken. It's a great predictable resource. You don't have to be here immediately. You can just show up sometime like late in the fall and harvest the, the pine cones. Perfect combination of resources. In addition, there are, uh, there's a soapstone source on site and also the uh, flathead sandstone up there is, is perfect for making matates. And you're only less than an hour from a, a chert quarry. We did find bone, sheep-sized bone, and one piece of bison-sized bone. In another lodge that we will be going to, we found what appears to have been a bag of stone tools that was a leather bag that was filled with ochre and stone tools because we had the outline of it in the ground when we excavated. We found over 60 monos and matates here. It's interesting, there are over 60 lodges here. There are over 60 monos at this site. There's basically one mono per lodge.